Hello, my name is Joanna Gordon. I'm a consultant anaesthetist. This is a simulation training video for theatre staff showing rigid bronchoscopy to remove a foreign body from a child's trachea. We've made this video for emergency theatre staff because we know this is a really stressful scenario. It's rare but it can be life-threatening and it should be managed at the presenting hospital because transferring the child to another hospital risks the airway becoming completely obstructed. Many emergency teams like ours will rarely do rigid bronchoscopy, so the on-call team will feel pretty anxious about doing it in a hurry. The most important thing is that the scrub staff get regular hands-on practice putting the bronchoscope kit together. Alongside that, we hope this video will help remind emergency theatre staff what to do. Initial management includes a history, exam and possible chest x-rays. If the team believe the foreign body is in the larynx or trachea, they'll call the consultant ENT surgeon and consultant anaesthetist to come in immediately. An urgent general anaesthetic and rigid bronchoscopy are needed to remove it. The anaesthetist and ODP should prepare the airway equipment and drugs. The emergency team should know where to find the stack and the relevant bronchoscopy equipment. In our hospital, the three kits are the paediatric bronchoscopy tray, the paediatric optical bronchoscopy forceps set and the paediatric Hopkins telescope. Also take any available paediatric bronchoscopy guides into theatre. Here are the contents of our hospital's bronchoscope tray. The surgeon and scrub nurse select the appropriate size of bronchoscope. In this scenario, it is a 4.5. Note that for the 26 cm length bronchoscope, we use a 10 cm bridge. For the 30 cm length bronchoscope, we use a 6 cm bridge. You will also need the Hopkins telescope and forceps set. So first you need the bronchoscope for the age of the child and also the bridge. Then you get your prism and you connect it to your light cable. You then connect your rubber bung onto your suction connector and also your grasper, adapter and bung. Then you take your bridge for your telescope and you connect it onto your telescope, turn and lock into position. You suction and you feed your screw down to the far end and then you get the adapter which fits into the end and then you screw your screw to tighten it and secure it. You then take your bronchoscope, you connect your prism, you then connect your suction onto the suction port and you are ready for the surgeon. The team should also have the tracheostomy and front of neck kit available, but if airway obstruction occurs, ventilation via the rigid bronchoscope is more likely to be successful than front of neck access. So good evening everybody, we're here for Jake, he's got this thing stuck in his um, trachea, probably in his bronchus, we're not quite sure. Um, so he's four years old, we're going to need a 4.5 um, bronchoscope and the next size down just in case we can't get that one in. Um, I need a six centimeter bridge to connect onto it so that we can um, connect the optical instruments and the telescope. We got the stack, oh yes, we got the stack, that's brilliant, and some adrenaline, the special suction tubing that goes in without coiling. Um, that's about all I think we need. And we've got the grasping for So Chris, what do, you, uh, what do you need? So our plan is to gas him down on the T piece on some super fluorine Try and keep him spontaneously breathing. We'll put okay. our circuit on, on the T-piece onto the side of the scope board. There is a risk he will become at Nick, um, in which case we can hopefully ventilate him through the bronchoscope. Okay. Uh, if that fails, we'll have to come out and ventilate him with a face mask. Okay, that's fine. Uh, 
we've got the connectors for the anesthetic fluid in your mouth. Yeah, it should fit on the scope. Um, to get the bronchoscope in, I might just need your laryngoscope just in case I can't get in very, okay. very easily. Um, yes, I think that's about all we need. The anaesthetist attaches the air's T-piece to the common gas outlet of the anaesthetic machine and delivers 100% oxygen and 8% SIVA fluorine with the child sat upright. Once the child is deeply asleep, the anaesthetist performs laryngoscopy and sprays the vocal cords and distal to the vocal cords with 1% lignocaine via a mucosal atomizer device. The child is positioned with full neck extension to facilitate rigid bronchoscopy. The anaesthetist hands over the airway to the surgeon, who again sprays the vocal cords and distal to the vocal cords with 1% lignocaine to reduce airway reactivity. The anaesthetist attaches the air's T-piece to the side of the bronchoscope and continues to deliver 100% oxygen and 8% SIVA fluorine. Ideally, the child continues to breathe spontaneously. Propofol and fast-acting muscle relaxant are immediately to hand in case there are significant difficulties with ventilation and deeper anaesthetic or paralysis are required. Jet ventilation should not be attempted via the bronchoscope in children. Initially, the surgeon and the team view the trachea and the foreign body with the telescope. The surgeon removes the telescope and places the optical forceps down the bronchoscope to grab hold of the foreign body and remove it. The surgeon successfully removes a milk bottle top from the child's trachea. Once the foreign body is removed, the surgeon performs a final check bronchoscopy. The team are happy that the airway is not too swollen and they wake the child up. This video should be used for training emergency theatre staff along with written and pictorial guides. The scrub team must also get hands-on experience with the bronchoscopy equipment to make sure they're comfortable with how to put it together. Thankfully, a child inhaling a foreign body and needing a rigid bronchoscopy to remove it is rare but the emergency theatre team should train for this so they know what to do. Good team communication is crucial for managing it safely. Thanks for watching.